Hello and welcome to chapter 18 in this series of tutorial videos on programming in C. I'm starting this video exactly from where we left off in chapter 17 with the main function that you can see here on the screen with the de uh, prototype definition of the say hello function at the top here and at the bottom here the code belonging to the say hello function or the definition of the function here printing say hello to the screen and on the right hand side you can see in the console that I've just quickly compiled that and executed to make sure everything runs OK. OK, so in this tutorial, we're going to extend this slightly and add another kind of function in showing how you use return types from functions and also how you supply parameters or arguments to functions. So in this program here, you can see that we're, you know already that we're adding up num1 and num2 and printing, storing the result in added up and printing the result to the screen. What I want to do just to demonstrate how you supply data or arguments to functions and from now on I'm going to call the data you give to functions either arguments or parameters they're interchangeable as far as I'm concerned so either one of those words means exactly the same thing so here I want to instead of using num1 plus num2 I want to put this into a function so I'm going to go up to the top here and declare a new function prototype because I want to store the result of the addition into added up, it needs to return an integer type, so I'm going to say int is the return type. The name I'm just going to call add, and now inside I'm going to open close brackets and put a semicolon. And now inside here I want to actually supply some arguments to this function, so I'm going to need two integers because I want this function to add two integers together, so I'll call it integer a and integer b. So int a then a comma and int b. So it's got two parameters, a and b, both of type integer. And when you declare your parameters, you always separate them with a comma apart from the last one in the definition. So if we only had integer a, the definition would simply look like that. OK. And now below the say hello here, I'm going to actually describe right, the description of the function with its corresponding code. So again, int and add, open, I'm going to say int a and int b, close the bracket, and now instead of the semicolon, just as we did for say hello, the corresponding code block. Now, for use of the program, I'm going to stick another printf inside here so that we know we run the program where we are. Say add, called, and I'll see what the values of x sorry not x, I've called them a and b, of x, of, well, of a and of b are just so that we can see that later on when we run it and now inside this code block here I'm going to declare a variable and this variable here only belongs and exists inside this code block now belonging to this function and I'm going to call it sum and I'm going to say equals a plus b. Then here I'm just going to put add sum as this value like this and now we've added both of a and b together we need to return the result of this which is stored in sum and to do this we simply type return sum and a semicolon and when this function is finished executing, which is here at the return statement, it returns an integer, and in this case it's returning sum, which is simply a and b, the data it was supplied as parameters, added together. So I'll save that, and now we need to actually use this function from our code, and we're going to do it here. So I'm going to comment out this line here, and I'm going to declare added up here, and instead of saying equals num1 plus num2, I'm going to say it's equal to add, which is our add function, open brackets, num1 and num2. So you can see in the definition on line 4 here, it takes integer a, integer b. It doesn't matter what you call these. It only matters here in the description of the function. And when you want to use these values, you then have to use them by their name that's defined here but they don't have to be 
the same names here when the values are supplied to the function as they are in the description of the function. So here I've got num1 and num2. I'm supplying num1 as a. I'm supplying num2 as b. And then a semicolon. So what's happening in the code here is, when it hits this point, it runs off and executes the code inside add, supplying the value of num1 as a and the value of num2 as b. So it'll be called here, it'll print a and b to the screen, it'll sum them together, and then it'll return this sum. So when the add is finished, it'll then store the value that was returned by the function here into added up and then print added up to the screen. So if I just save that now and compile and run, and now you can see that we print first of all num1 is 3 and num2 is 6 and now add has been called because on this line here it needs to store the value returned by the function add into added up. So add is then called so that line's then printed here with a for the value of 3 and b as 6 which can, corresponds to num1 which is here 3 and num2 which is 6 it adds them up making giving sum a value of 9 and prints it to the screen and then this value is stored inside added up and that value is printed to the screen and then the rest of the program is exactly as before then I'll say hello function is called so the program runs off and executes the code inside the say hello block and returns and then the program comes back to line 24 and ends. So it's actually quite simple. It's very easy just to declare your functions with some parameters data supplied and simply say what type of data is returned from the function and then store that in a variable that has the same type. Okay, that's it for this short video on slight extension in how we declare and use functions. In the next video we'll start talking a little bit about variable scope. Thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome on YouTube.